Well, this was going to be the the big uh, mystery whistleblower witness who was finally going to redeem the last six months of uh, wasted effort and failures in um, Republican investigations on the Oversight Committee. And suddenly, uh, the whole country knows now the reason he was missing is because he's a fugitive from the U.S. government, uh, fleeing these charges of uh, making false statements, uh, being an, uh, an arms trafficker, trying to set up this uh, Chinese arms for Iranian oil deal, um, and then also failing to register as a, uh, a foreign agent. Um, and, you know, a series of, of multiple felonies. Um, and it's extraordinary to me, as I was leaving the Capitol this evening, to learn that my colleagues, rather than um, simply going home and trying to ride out the news day, are doubling down now and saying that the Department of Justice is going after him because of the wealth of information that he presumably has to give them about, I don't know what, their previous failed efforts at getting Joe Biden, the, um, st the suspicious activities reports that went nowhere and revealed nothing on Biden or their Form 1023, um, which also exploded their allegations of bribery um, about Biden because it turned out to be the same recycled Giuliani stuff that was rejected by Donald Trump's yep. own U.S. attorney in the Western District of Pennsylvania. So none of it's leading anywhere. And yet uh, they're continuing to dive back in like the cult members they've become. This is Jamie Raskin ripping apart the Republicans over their supposed prize whistleblower who apparently was going to expose Biden for corruption and other conspiracy theories only for it to turn out that the same whistleblower has been charged with failing to register as a foreign agent, arms trafficking, Iranian sanctions violations, and making false statements to the federal agents. But hey, only the best people. Now, just some background here. The Department of Justice has charged Gal Luft, an Israeli-American leader of a think tank based in Maryland, with several crimes related to his work as a foreign agent for China and other countries. Luft is also on the run from U.S. law enforcement after he fled from Cyprus, where he was initially detained in February. Luft claims that he's a whistleblower who has exposed the Biden family's corrupt business ties with people connected to the Chinese military. He claims that he shared this evidence with federal agents in 2019, but that there's some vast conspiracy to hunt him down to stop him from speaking out. Some Republican lawmakers, like James Comer, the chair of the House Oversight Committee, and Ron Johnson, have backed Luft's claims and demanded his protection. Of course, back in the world of reality, the reason that Luft is likely not credible is that he violated the Foreign Agents Registration Act and other laws by covertly hiring and paying a former high-ranking U.S. official to support Chinese policies. Luft is also accused of participating in illegal arms deals with China, Libya, the United Arab Emirates, and Iran. He could face a maximum of 100 years in prison if he's found guilty. That's who the Republicans have pinned their hopes on, because after all, why wouldn't they line up behind a criminal con artist? But just like Trump does, this whistleblower claims that these charges are all a vast conspiracy to silence him, because why take responsibility when you can just cry victim? But the simple truth is that, again, like Trump, he broke the law and the evidence is so overwhelming that the federal government is willing to move forward with charges, even despite the inevitable meltdown and cries of censorship from Republicans. This is where the GOP is now. They are trusting literally spies for China and Russian oligarchs as their sources of evidence to bring down an American president because patriots are something. Granted, it can't be that surprising when the leader of the Republicans' own party was willing to blackmail President Zelensky to get dirt on Biden. They are just that desperate and scared of Joe Biden that they're willing to take all of the most unethical steps with the most unethical people in broad daylight to stop him. Ted Lieu said it perfectly at the Republicans' latest hearing demonizing federal law enforcement for daring to follow the law. Trump advisor Roger Stone was convicted in a federal court, correct? Uh, that's my recollection. Trump donor Elliot Brady was convicted in a federal court, correct? Uh, also my recollection. The attorney general at the time for those two convictions was Bill Barr. Which president nominated Bill Barr for attorney general? Uh, president Trump. Okay. Trump's former lawyer Michael Cohen was convicted on two separate occasions in a federal court, correct? Uh, I believe that's correct. The attorney general at the time for Cohen's second conviction was Matthew Whitaker. Which president appointed Matthew Whitaker as acting attorney general? Uh, president Trump. Okay. Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, was convicted in a federal court, correct? Yes. Trump's former deputy campaign manager, Mr. Gates, was convicted in a federal court, correct? That's my recollection. 
Trump's campaign foreign policy advisor, George Papadopoulos, was convicted in a federal court, correct? Uh, yes, I think he, yeah, he pled guilty, yes. The attorney general at the time of those three cases was Jeff Sessions. Which president nominated Jeff Sessions for attorney general? President Trump. You were the FBI director for all of those cases at the time. Which president nominated you? President Trump. Okay. What these facts show is we don't have a two-tiered system of justice. We have one Department of Justice that goes after criminals regardless of party ideology. All of these folks were convicted under the administrations of three separate Republican attorneys general. It is not the fault of the FBI that Donald Trump surrounded himself with criminals. Donald Trump brought that upon himself. And just to repeat here, it is not the fault of the FBI that Donald Trump surrounded himself with criminals. The fact is that Republicans are so far down the rabbit hole and so high on their own supply that the mere notion that a single one of them could be a criminal is so unfathomable that the only explanation is that there's some cabal of Soros-funded, child-eating, left-wing communists controlling the FBI. The same FBI whose current leader was chosen, hand-picked, by Donald Trump himself. Please. Dear God, someone make it make sense. Here's the current director of the FBI, Christopher Wray, pointing out to a Republican that he was unanimously supported by Republicans when he was nominated. He started out as a, an AUSA, and I'm getting this information from Wikipedia, the great font of knowledge in the digital age, and so I'm assuming that it's true, but you started out as an AUSA. You uh, were nominated by Republican President Bush for the position of Assistant Attorney General in the Criminal Division at the Department of Justice, and you were confirmed by a Republican Senate, if I uh, am, am correct in that? Uh, yes, by uh, unanimous voice vote. And, and you were then nominated by Republican President Donald Trump uh, to be the FBI director, and again confirmed by the Republican Senate uh, uh, for that position. Uh, yes, I think there were only five votes against me, and they were all uh, from Democrats. Um, uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, you're still a registered Republican, and I hope you don't change your party affiliation after this hearing is over. Um, but I want to thank you. And look, we can do this all day, where a bunch of Republican talking points are directly undermined, often by Republicans themselves. But what it proves is clear. For them, it's not about the facts, it is about the narrative. It's about selling the lie by whatever means necessary, even if they have to pin their hopes on outright criminals and con men. The lies are the point, just as they've always been the point. Going back to the days of Benghazi, Kevin McCarthy literally showed up on national television and admitted that the whole point of Benghazi, for which Hillary Clinton was ultimately absolved of any wrongdoing by Republicans' own committee was to use that scandal as a predicate to hurt her poll numbers. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee, a select committee. What are her numbers today? Her numbers are dropping. Why? Because she's untrustable. But no one would have known any of that had happened had we not I agree. thought... Same playbook, different day. So look, I get that Republicans are desperate to try and land some type of a gotcha on Joe Biden so that they could win the next election, but all they're doing is undermining their own credibility by recruiting the least credible people on earth, all of which underscores the truth. They've got nothing on Biden, no matter how hard they try to manifest it into reality. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.